Hello everybody out there at Riverside, we're coming to you from uh, North Canterbury Ambly and we are sitting in our bubble. This is our dog Titan and he's going to sit in with us uh, as we share with you guys and hopefully bring uh, some uh, encouraging words. I was uh, praying the other night and I felt uh, God kind of prompt the question to me, who do you say I am, which we find in Matthew 16 in the Bible, where Peter is talking to Jesus and uh, Jesus asks him the question, uh, who do you say I am? And of course, Peter replies, uh, the Christ, the son of God. And it kind of got me thinking on who do I say God is? And so I thought I'd share some of the, um, the ideas that I had on who God is to me. First, um, he's the truth. Now, his word comes to us through the Bible, and the Bible is the inspired word of God. So everything that is written in the Bible, I believe to be the truth. And uh, it's the truth, the way, and the life. And so uh, everything that's in there, we can depend upon all of his promises and all his uh, gifts that he gives us and insights through the Bible uh, can be true. Next, um, uh, the, the Waymaker, you know, that song Waymaker, uh, it uh, kind of rolls through my mind. And he is the Waymaker. He can see things that we can't see. He's got a way bigger picture of, of the situation than we have. Uh, so he is the Waymaker. He will make a Waymaker. Uh, next, he's, he's the comforter. Uh, Jesus, as he was ascending up to heaven, uh, said that he would send the comforter. And he has done that. He did that at Pentecost. And so we have the Holy Spirit with us. And the Holy Spirit uh, is, is coming, comes to us to, to, bring, us, uh, to bring us comfort. Um, he's also love. Uh, you know, God knows us like no other. He is uh, perfect in every way, and he has made us perfect. And he loves us no matter how how we react or who who we are or what we've done. So so he is pure love. He's always near to us. Uh, he always guarantees to walk with us. Uh, we can call out to him anytime, and he hears every word we say to him, uh, no matter how small that word is, that he loves us. Uh, he's also in control. Uh, God is the, the grand controller of everything um, uh, in our lives and on this planet Earth. Uh, and he uses every situation uh, to, to, his, to his purpose and to his will. And, um, and we need to relax in that control and let him take the reins. Um, so there's some of the ideas that I had of uh, who, who, do I, who do you say I am as God posed the question to me. And uh, so Liz, you've got some ideas as well. Thank like you. To share them. I have. Hi everyone. Um, nice to tune in with you today and we're thinking of you all, especially those of you who are living alone or are finding it difficult at this time, perhaps with lots of young children trying to, trying to keep them occupied, um, we're thinking of you. I know it's easy to spend all day scrolling through Facebook and reading the news and listening to the news and it is important to keep informed but please make sure you're reading and listening to reputable news sources and to not let fear overtake you but to balance it with the word of God. For God has not given us a spirit of fear but of love and power and a sound mind. And so if you fear, feel like the fear is overtaking you in the news, ask God, to, ask God to give you that sound mind. I've got some props for our talk today. The first one, I'll just hold it up to the camera. If you can't read it, it says, keep calm and carry on. Now, if you don't know the story about that, look it up on Wikipedia. So in 1939, on the brink of World War II, the British government produced three posters to reassure um, the people that they were to, to keep calm and to carry on. However, those posters never made it to public circulation, but they were. this one was found only about 20 years ago in a dusty pile of old books. But it got me thinking, they used the crown of King George VI to reassure the people on the brink of something big. And I thought, what does our king say? Our king is the king of kings. And what he says in his word, Psalm 46 verse 10, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Another version of be still and know is cease striving and know that I am God. And what the King of Kings said to Joshua when he was about to cross the River Jordan was be strong and of good courage. 
Do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now that doesn't mean you can go out. That means stay inside your bubble for the Lord your God is with you. The best thing we can all do right now is to stay home, keep safe, and that's how we're going to save lives in New Zealand. That's right. Now there's a lot of fear around, I know, and but so many times in the Bible, Jesus said, do not fear, do not be afraid. And if you are worried, just type into Google scriptures about fear and just pray through them, read through them, print them out, memorize them, whatever, whatever works for you. But perhaps you could start with Luke 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 22, uh, when Jesus said, do not worry about your life and just read through that. It's also important to remember that while we have never lived through a pandemic like this before in our lifetime, we are all the descendants of people who have survived plagues, pandemics, Spanish flu and so on. Our ancestors have been through this and they came through otherwise we wouldn't be here. And so we will get through this. We just need to um, press on and be still and know that he is God. So I thought I'd talk to you about um, some of the things that our family is doing. We are in the country, we have lots of animals to feed every day, the children are still, still homeschooling, so we're quite busy, but the children have also made goals. This is a great idea for adults or children, or teenagers, to make some goals. All those things you always say, I'll do that when I have time. Well now we've got the time, we've got four or six or more weeks. So this is, um, I have Lydia's permission to show you this and some of her goals, her lockdown goals, are to cook something new, to plant vegetables, spend time with mum and dad and my favourite one, read as many books as possible. So it's a great idea for adults and children again to make a journal. This is Lydia's COVID-19 lockdown diary. So good idea to keep a diary at the moment, a journal of your time in quarantine, because one day what we're going through now will go down in history and you can say, I survived COVID-19 lockdown and this is my story and bring it off the shelf and show everyone. Some of the amazing things have been achieved during quarantines in the past. You can look that up as well. William Shakespeare and Isaac Newton, for example, achieved amazing accomplishments while they were quarantined during the plague. Another idea I have, this is my last idea, is um, more scripture memory. There's a great psalm that is um, a good one to pray through pray over yourself, pray over your family at the moment, and that is Psalm 91. There's 16 verses in Psalm 91, so you and your children could commit to learning one verse a day for the next 16 days and then move on to another psalm, or you might learn it faster than that. But I'll just read you verse 1, Psalm 91 verse 1. They who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So there you have it, the secret place, mm. your isolation bubble. That's right. Keep safe, everyone, and God bless. Um, just also just a quick uh, shout out to all the uh, families out there with kids. Look, don't stress the learning. Uh, the kids will not fall too far behind, so don't stress it. The best advice we can give you uh, from a homeschooling family is to read, read, read with your kids. Um, that's all you need to do to keep your kids up to speed at the moment, um, at the moment for, before they go back to school. So uh, just read with them, enjoy them, enjoy the time, and see the positives in it. So um, I'm just going to close in prayer and um, we hope to see you guys uh, when church opens again. And kids, I'd love to see your, your, uh, your diaries when, uh, when we come out of this at the other end and look forward to having a reading on how it was for you guys. So I'm just going to close in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we just uh, thank you for the priv privilege of uh, living here in New Zealand where we have a, an amazing uh, infrastructure, a great government that are looking after us. And Lord, we just pray a blessing upon all those people that are essential services that are out there uh, helping keep us safe and keep us well fed and comfortable in our, in our bubbles at home. And Lord, we just ask for the comforter to come and comfort those that really need that comforting right now. And we ask this all in the name of Jesus. And we all said, Amen. Amen. So we look forward to seeing you guys. Bless you all. Bye. Bye.